All right, who the hell knows that? Isn't that from the beginning, isn't it? From the beginning. Go on. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the LOCA project. Which, um, so my name is Adrian Stevenson, one of the, um, from Yukon there, as you can see, just on the Partners and Consultants bit. And LOCA stands for Linked, Open, Copac, and Archives Hub. And it's a, it was funded as part of JISC Expo, and we're just, we're just about sort of the finishing stage. So what are the Archives Hub and what's Copac? Basically, two national data services based at Myamas in Manchester. The Archives Hub is an aggregation of archival descriptions um, from all around the UK, and Copac sort of does a similar thing for books. It's basically a union catalogue of sorts, um, and you've got the two URIs there. And... Um, what we're actually doing, we're exposing linked data uh, for those two services. And also uh, part of the call was to try and attempt to come up with a, a compelling prototype. And in our case, we went for a visualization as well as reporting back on um, opportunities and barriers on our blog. And there's a lot of good stuff on the blog there if you're interested. I'm not going to explain linked data right now, not in, in, in 20 seconds, but uh, this, if you're not aware of linked data, I, I suspect a lot of you are, this is the pivotal document. So you've got the URI there, but it's about URIs, HTTP, RDF, and linking to things. And there's also there this notion of uh, star rating systems. So you can have a look there. And the basis of it is these things called triples. Um, just giving you a couple of examples. So it's quite a simple sort of logic-based notion of things. Uh, Keith Richards is a member of the Rolling Stones, subject, object, predicate form. And so that's basically the sort of the backbone of RDF, but um, with like, you know, just complex area. And so what we're doing on local, well, we're linking things. See there at the bottom, we've got the archives of data, and we're linking up to geo names, to so geographical stuff, linking to something called VIAF, which is the Virtual International Authority file. Uh, and they've got links into Wikipedia, um, DBpedia being the interface for that, and that's hooked up into BBC. So basically, by doing it means we can basically utilize that data. And it's important for the geo-temporal sort of uh, aspect of what I was asked to talk about today. So we put quite a lot of effort into putting time stuff. So we've got data.gov URIs for time. We've got location stuff in there and stuff based on names and subjects. So those, you know, they're important things around which the data's um, framed. That's our um, archives hub uh, data website, data.archiveshub.ac.uk. So that's where you go for the link data for the archival stuff. And there's a Sparkle endpoint there. There's um, some example resources, and you can get a download of the data. And it's Creative Commons Zero, so it's completely free, free data. Uh, I've just given an example of one of the, the resources there. Um, and really, the main point there to, to, to note, really, is that URI right at the bottom there. If you, if you go to that as a machine, you'll get, you'll get RDF. Um, and you can also get this data in uh, JSON and Turtle form, as well as this sort of fairly, admittedly fairly basic sort of browser-based view. Um, we're also putting out data for Copac. Uh, that's still not quite ready yet, but that's a bit of an example. It's, it's essentially doing the same thing, and so it will have the same kind of interface. So uh, the hub's been out for a couple of months now, and this, the Copac should hopefully be finished in, I suspect it'll be, be a, we'll release it about the beginning of, of September. So onto the visualization prototype. So we had some, some kind of simple use cases. We didn't, it wasn't that thorough process, really. But basically, our visualization, I'll show you it in a second, takes data from the Sparkle endpoint. Uh, and then we looked at using various tools and, that you can get. So we've not really built our own software for this. We've used off-the-shelf off tools, similarly, many eyes and stuff. So that's basically it. It's not quite finished yet. But uh, basically, the top there is a timeline. Uh, so the length of the green line effectively represents the, the length of time the, the archive covers. And if you're interested in one of those, say Bertie, Nancy, Sear there, you click on that, and that brings up the box and a map pin. And the, the, the locate with archives, because they're physical things, they're important, so where they are is important. And just a quick heads up for our new project, Linking Lives, which is essentially carrying on uh, in terms of the consuming the data that we've produced. Um, and this is using a sort of similar idea to what BBC do with their... Artists, so we've got our stuff on the left, and then we've got stuff that we'll be pulling in on the right and fusing the data together. Um, just thought, well, link data, what's the, what's the benefit? I think it really comes down to it's a standardized way of a promise of a sort of a global, global um, database of sorts uh, with the potential for mesh up tools. So if you compare it to APIs, it has the potential to, to need to be less handcrafted. Some challenges. Um, matching things, matching subjects. 
So essentially, our stuff is in this left column, and we have these. All we tend to have is what you can see there in the label, academic libraries. And when we're trying to match up to the Library of Congress subject headings, it can be quite tricky. And uh, this whole area of matching things can, can, be, can be a tough one. Similarly with places, we, again, in the left column is what we've got. Um, for example, Abergavenny in Wales. If we try and match that against stuff from GeoNames, we're getting four matches immediately on the, on the very first one, and I can show you there's lots here. So it's really quite a, quite a, a thing to do, this, this matching stuff, and it's quite a headache. Um, more challenges of, of the area of linked data, sustainability. If, you know, if you're obviously linking your stuff to stuff that's out there that you're not in control of, that can disappear. And this is what happened, for example, with Guy Ed Summers, who puts out Library of Congress subject headings. Um, he put a link to interface to those, and that disappeared, although it's back. So happy ending there. Scalability can be an issue. Um, essentially, the, 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 the diagram on the right was drawn by this guy, um, a conference I went to recently, and he's basically saying for one triple statement, that thing at the top, you can potentially need to have, in the case of Elsevier, um, potentially nine or ten just provenance, statement, provenance statements per for triple, so that can be tricky. Modeling can be difficult. Uh, archival description, for example, which is what we dealt with, is very, very hierarchical and multi-level, and the sense of context of the hierarchies is very important. So that was quite tricky. Data can be very dirty as well, but this, this in a way, can be a good thing. Licensing, less of an issue these days. And just to sort of conclude, well, linked data, what, so what's the big deal? Well, it essentially can make your data work harder. It can create new channels into your data. You can connect your data with other sources in other repositories, potentially, and DBpedia. And basically, it can help uh, basically expose what you've got in your potentially hidden collections out there. Okay. Thank you very much.